I'm sure the 49ers were thankful for the Seahawks this Thanksgiving as they got a bird to devour on national television. The Seahawks are good though. I'm just not sure they're great. And we definitely have a lot of work to do with the roster if we're going to make them a great team. And that is answering questions on the interior of the offensive line, maybe even potentially at quarterback as well, looking beyond Geno Smith. And then defensively, there is, you know, quite a bit of talent there. Devin Witherspoon has had a fantastic rookie year. Tariq Wollin, for the most part, has been amazing. Boye Mafe is developing into being one of the better pure pass rushers in the NFL based off of what he's done this season. So there are a lot of things to get excited about, but we have to fill in some of these gaps and truly make this team a Super Bowl contender. And I'd be all up for rebuilding the Legion of Boom here uh, in 2023 with this Seahawks team. And this is the team we are working with when healthy Abraham Lucas is at right tackle. And let me tell you, the first time I saw Jason Peters step on the field for the Seahawks, I was bewildered. I go, wow, he's still in the NFL, huh? Pretty incredible. But yes, 41-year-old Jason Peters, as of the game against the 49ers, is on the Seahawks. And he's been on them for, you know, several weeks now, but I say as of because I'm not sure he makes it to the end of the season. We'll see. I think you're hoping that Olu Oluwatimi can end up being your starting center of the future. I'm not sure if that ends up happening or not, so we might look to address the interior of the offensive line here. Abraham Lucas and Charles Cross are awesome, like Damian Lewis. Noah Fant, maybe we can upgrade on, and the receiving core is fantastic. I will say we probably do end up trading Tyler Lockett. He's 30 years old, still a really nice player, right? He's put up phenomenal seasons and just doesn't get talked about enough. I feel like he's just kind of like Doug Baldwin in that way, where Doug Baldwin didn't get nearly the amount of national attention that he probably deserved. And I'm not sure why exactly. Now Lockett is under contract for the next three seasons. However, that cap hit gets really expensive in 2024 and 2025. We may look to just cut bait at some point and get some value back for him. DK Metcalf is obviously a beast. JSN needs to get involved more really does. Kenneth Walker's a beast. And Gen then Geno Smith is just a tough call. And maybe he's going to be good enough to let the Seahawks win in real life. But in the game, he's a 77 overall with normal dev. He's 32. There's just not really a whole lot we can do with that. And Seahawks probably are going to look for his replacement in real life anyway at some point over the next you know year or two. So probably just end up moving him or letting him walk at some point, but he's under a three-year contract as well, so I'm not sure we're going to be able to let him walk. We might have to make a trade. Linebacking core looks really solid. Boye Mafe needs an upgrade. The Seahawks traded their second-round pick to get Leonard Williams from the Giants, and uh, that does make their defensive line better, but, you know, their secondary, as I mentioned, kind of like a new 2023 Legion of Boom, not on that same level, but with the emergence of you know, top five or top six pick Devin Witherspoon. He was either the fifth or the sixth pick, I want to say. You know, this is kind of like their own Legion of Boom in a way, not to that same level, but Quandre Diggs is a beast in the secondary. Hook him horns, fifth pick for Witherspoon. Uh, he is a monster, and that was not surprising to see if you watch him play at Illinois. Jamal Adams has never been an elite coverage player, but definitely is amazing playing downhill, especially good blitzer. And uh, it's just... You know, always finding ways to make plays, even if it's not necessarily at the back end. He doesn't have to. He's not like a center fielder over the top free safety like, you know, we used to see with Earl Thomas, for example. And then Wollin, obviously, a beast as well. Uh, but we do have work to do. I like Trey Brown, too. He, I feel like he should be higher than a 74 overall. But there are some pieces we need to go ahead and replace, some that are going to regress and a lot we need to develop. So let's go ahead and start this rebuild. We'll simulate to the midseason mark and then potentially make some trades. I have to see what happens. Might need to set my scouts first. I'm going to use auto-generated draft classes. I do just prefer that for the fantasy rebuild so we're not drafting the same player over and over again. And I will, of course, do the realistic rebuilds like I always do with the draft class of players that are actually going to be drafted. But it's better to do that later into the year when we have a better idea of which players are going to be in play for which teams. So that's generally just the way I like to do it. The draft class is still under renovation. The system is completely screwed up. I'm trying to find a way that the faces just don't auto reset to the same face 
and number zero or whatever it is for every single draft class. It's a huge glitch going on. The top downloaded class on Xbox, which is mine, is not functioning at all. And I can't delete it. It doesn't let me. So we're stuck with everyone just thinking it's terrible, which it is. And there's nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. And I tried to upload another one. That still didn't work. And then I, I'm working on one right now that I think is good. But the faces just might not work. Apparently, what you can do is change the number once you've downloaded the class on whatever player and then change it back and it'll actually load in. I don't know if that's true for everybody. It's just something I heard from one person uh, and, you know, we'll see. It, it sucks that something's broken every year. Uh, it, it really just, it sucks. And EA, dude, come on, figure it out. So unfortunately, only two and four at the midseason mark here in 2023. And we have a couple of players that we're going to have to re-sign. Devin Bush probably won't be one of them, but Jordan Brooks is somebody I do want to keep around, despite them being very similar here, both 25 years old, star dev, linebackers. Jordan Brooks is slightly higher, of course. Noah Fant, I'd like to bring back. Leonard Williams, I'm not sure you trade for and then don't try to re-sign. That seems a little bit crazy to me, but as to whether I want him in my actual rebuild, it's not going to be happening because we don't have the cap room in order to do that. Now, we're going to be able to bring back, of course, Jordan Brooks. That shouldn't be $9 million a year, especially if we spread this out. But I, in no way, shape, or form, can bring back, you know, half these free agents to be. And Bobby Wagner, I'm, I'm seeing in the top right, he's probably someone we should trade. 33 years old. He's an 88 overall. Great going downhill. Coverage skills, obviously, are not what they used to be. That's to be expected of a 33-year-old versus a 23-year-old. Don't move quite as well, but God, he's so smart. So awesome playing the run, but probably just needs to be traded at this point. And I don't know what value we can even get back for him. It'll be a little bit of a salary cap dump, even though it's not huge but mainly trying to get anything back for a guy that's not going to be here on the team in two years. And then we'll re-sign Jordan Brooks to a four-year deal. I thought about changing the defensive scheme to make him a little bit more interested, but just didn't end up doing that. We signed him to a pretty reasonable contract for what you'd see in real life, and I think that's a pretty good move overall for us, but need to figure out where we can save money. So it's not really Jamal Adams because we have a huge penalty associated with moving him, but his salary cap hit is massive. There, When you look at it, there are really not a lot of places we can save money at all. I'm not cutting Damian Lewis. No way. I'm not cutting DK Metcalf, obviously. I'm not cutting Quandre Diggs, but the penalty associated with moving a half of these guys is astronomical. And we, we really are just stuck right now. That's what it comes down to. Absolutely stuck. Are right, making a very interesting trade here. Bobby Wagner, Will Disley, Devin Bush, a third and a future two to get a first round pick from the Rams. It's a lot for us to give up. We're giving the Rams Bobby Wagner back. Enjoy that. But, you know, I do want to end up getting some of those mid round picks back. And if we're not able to re sign Noah Fant and Leonard Williams, we have to make a trade. And I know in real life, the Seahawks have come away and traded for Leonard Williams. We cannot re-sign him. We don't have the money. So in order to make up for that, I want something back. We're going to have to trade Leonard Williams and probably Noah Fant as well. This trade is going to be Leonard Williams, Damian Lewis, who I did not want to trade. Really didn't want to trade any of these guys. Noah Fant as well for two second round picks, one next year, one the year after that, and then a third round pick this year. As I mentioned, didn't want to move any of those players, but we simply were not financially going to be able to afford any of them so unless we wanted to lose them for nothing which is probably what i'll do in the realistic rebuilds i'm going to try to get whatever i can for them so we've kind of restocked our draft picks a little bit after that first trade and of course we're going to look at defensive ends here we're going to have to replace leonard williams and i don't know if it, it wouldn't work in real life right because you have Uchenna Nwosu, you have Boye Mafe. Those are three, four rush outside linebackers. And typically, if you don't know the difference, those guys are going to be a little bit smaller. So you're talking about guys that are in that kind of like 240 to 255 range, sometimes gets, you know, a little bit lighter, a little bit heavier, but typically that's where they're going to fall. And at defensive end, they're typically going to be about 
10 to 15, maybe even 20 pounds heavier. So Boye Mafe is kind of on the high end of one of those rush linebackers that if he were able to add a little bit, bit more mass and, and more play strength, he's going to be probably someone capable of playing in a 4-3 as a defensive end. But you're really going to have to be able to set the edge and just defend the run a little bit better than a lot of these 3-4 outside linebackers typically would. When you go to, to a guy like TJ Watt, you're looking obviously at someone that's, oh, I don't know, 250 pounds. But Miles Garrett, who's just your typical 4-3 defensive end, is in that, you know, 275 type range. So Darius Smith, kind of that same deal. So typically a little bit heavier, typically a little bit more stout against the run. And we just don't really have that, but would it work in Madden? It probably would. It just feels a little bit cheesy. Ooh, we just lost 35 nothing. So I'm assuming the breakout performance for Boye Mafe did not come true, did not come to fruition. And it is just completely downhill right now. Obviously we traded some good players, but they were gonna leave anyway. We're two and seven as is most of the NFC West right now with the exception of course of that top team in there, which I think was the Niners if I saw correctly. Jamarcus Freeman looks like he's going to be a really, really good corner, but we're not going to trade up to number one for a position we don't need. It would just be a little bit ridiculous. So we went very downhill, 3-14, and 14. and per usual, as always, I didn't force any wins. We just, I guess, lost some talent and then just lost every game with the exception of Week 18 for the rest of the year. So... Just terrible. And a lot of those were close losses from what I saw. So it's just, you know, it didn't go our way this year. And I think we kind of knew that at the midseason mark already. Geno Smith is not performing to the level that we need him to. And that is perhaps letting guys like Kenneth Walker not play as well. And this is a good season, by the way, but it's something that can happen. Obviously, it would affect those receivers more. Lockett, Smith and Jigba, Metcalf very underwhelming years for everyone as Colby Parkinson ended up being tight end one. Defensively, I mean, we are leading soccer as Boye Mafe with four over the course of a 17 game season. If we go to his actual numbers right now, he had seven in nine games going to the Niners game. So, you know, not exactly indicative of his play in real life. Ravens beat the Cowboys in the Super Bowl as Patrick Mahomes wins league MVP. Nothing particularly interesting from our side. Obviously, you know, we just weren't really good enough to have anybody in consideration for a lot of those. But I think a change of offensive and defensive playbooks is going to do a lot of, or uh, do us a lot of good. And we need to figure out this quarterback situation because it's clear that Geno's not going to end up being the guy for us. And we are negative in cap room right now. So we are going to need to figure something out. And we might just need to bite the bullet and trade Geno Smith so that we don't destroy our entire team chances going forward. Cutting uh, cutting Brian Moan is going to be a very good start. So we end up, by the way, with two top six picks, including one in the first two at number two. So I could have just said two and six. I get that. Um, Got to get that watch time up, right? Here's the thing. I, I'm going to do everything in my power to convince myself not to draft the corner but i do need to just trade gino he's regressed down to a 73 his cap hit is ridiculous nobody wants him i will trade him to anyone that can afford him anyone gino smith and a five gets me a third round pick next season for the patriots so i did the best that i could we just ripped the band-aid off it's gonna sting a little bit now in terms of cap room with that penalty but we also free up money by doing that so all in all it's just a good move overall for us a lot of alls being said and i know we're paying these safeties an incredible amount and quandre Diggs is only getting worse why am i not trading quandre Diggs? well because he went to texas son hook him <laughs> quandre from earl thomas i can't get rid of my texas boys this corner is so good though so good it's, uh, man, don't, don't be tricked. Don't do it. I gotta stay away. But also, what if he's like, oh, I don't know, the best player in the class and I have to trade up one spot to get him or maybe not even one. 
I am talking myself into it, I realize. Now the corner is actually not expected to go until the fifth overall pick. At that point, it might be stupid to not draft him, you know what I mean? Okay, so we pick at number two. Definitely want to pause this at some point. So Dalvin Adams is the first pick. We're picking it at number six, but a lot of what happens in the next couple of minutes really depends on what this quarterback looks like. Full scouted him, and he is around one to two talent, which is pretty good for a quarterback. 6'5", 230. He's got pretty good accuracy, great throw under pressure, elite throw power, decent movement skills as well. It might be time to take a quarterback. We traded Geno Smith. We don't have a QB. It probably is not a bad idea to do that. Now, why'd the cornerback drop down the board? Oh, he didn't. I'm just looking at QB. Okay, so I think... Do I just draft the QB here? I know it. the value isn't perfect. Round one to two talent probably guarantees, oh, I don't know, 73 overall at the lowest. But that's like pretty good for rookie quarterback. Not awful. It's okay. And if you get 74, 75, like then it's a great pick. Maybe not great, but definitely not bad. You know, I'm just going to draft the quarterback. It makes too much sense. We need a quarterback. Here's a pretty good one. Why bother overthinking it? We know he's not a top five or round one talent even, but he's close enough. And that, that makes sense to me. He's hidden dev, 95 throw power, decent-ish athlete, nothing exceptional, but big time arm and the accuracy is not going to be too bad either. Throw under pressure is going to be pretty good. I think this is going to be a really nice pick for us. All right, just, just going to cost me a fourth round pick to move up two spots or really just jumping the Cardinals for the number four pick. Patriots here at three take a left tackle out of Georgia, which they've done before, Isaiah Wynn. And at number four, we are going to take the corner, Jamarcus Freeman. This is, I think, the highest of Jamarcus has gone in the draft since Jamarcus Russell in 2007. Hopefully this one is nothing like the last one. And Jamarcus Freeman should be a monster. I mean, ran in the mid four twos, computer timed at the combine, slower somehow with the hand time at the pro day. Not great scouts doing him any favors uh, at Minnesota for the Golden Gophers. We're, we're drafting him. I mean, just too good to pass on, really. Hidden Dev, 96 speed, 91 acceleration, 95 change of direction. Just too good of a player to not draft at this point. So we trade up really one pick to jump the Cardinals, two spots overall, and we get maybe the best player in the entire draft. Yeah, we have Mark Brown on the board. I was thinking about just trading down from this pick, but... He's pretty good, and he's somewhat local. I know Washington State's in Pullman, which is super, super far eastern Washington. But, um, could be good. Could be good to draft him. This center looks good down the board, too. Probably about a 70 overall. But, yeah, I think we go ahead and draft the guard. Mark Brown out of Washington State. Please be good, and he's got normal dev, which is always incredibly disappointing on the offensive line. The only reason you draft offensive linemen is hoping for hidden dev. And we did not get it. It's incredibly difficult or impossible almost to get a dev trade upgrade on the O-line. So swing and a miss there, unfortunately. You know, I like Thomas Johnson when I saw him last round. I would have maybe even considered drafting him in the second. Just seems like great value, elite speed. A tackle, B zone coverage, pursuit could be good, but all we really need to know is that he's got great tackling, good coverage, and great speed. All the recipe for a good player uh, at that point. 86 speed, 87 acceleration, really, really good player, and only 21 years old, so a lot of time to develop him as well, and he's going to earn experience points a lot faster. And we actually have another pick coming up as well here in the third round, and then not one until the sixth. So we could double dip on linebackers. I saw another decent looking one. This receiver from Michigan, Greg Bowman, looks pretty good. But I just don't think we're going to be drafting a receiver in this draft class. He's not good enough to make me change my mind on that. Let's go Aaron Woodard. Another linebacker. 23 years old. Blech. But 6 foot, 244. Run stopper archetype. So A tackle will be pursued. I bet block sheds at least to see. And has great speed as well. Should be a pretty good player. And coverage really is not going to be too bad either. Hidden Dev as well. Not the fastest, but not bad speed. And great acceleration. 
potential starting inside linebacker. I just forgot there was a defensive tackle that intrigued me, and I completely forgot about them. Obviously, long gone at this point, but I may have missed. Might just take a shot on another offensive lineman, but not really a lot of good-looking ones at this point, unfortunately. So, I guess we just take a really good pass-protecting center. All right. We absolutely killed it. Jojo Miller's a 74, which I feel pretty good about. That's a nice pickup for us. Accuracy's good. Throw power's awesome. Just needs some development. Paranoid sense of pressure scares me a little bit. The corner was worth trading up for. 83 overall. 96 speed, 84 man, 76 zone, 79 press. Really, really good. Could move him back to safety, but I think it'd be a waste. 76 overall for Mark Brown. The guard is higher than I was expecting. Just pure power. Not really much of a pass protector at this point. And he's good enough to start, even though he doesn't have the dev trait. Thomas Johnson's a 74. Aaron Woodard is a 72. And wow, this was not a very good draft class. We get the highest overall player by a mile. And then it goes from 83 down to 277 overall players. And then looks like quite a few 76s, including the guard, Mark Brown. Okay, maybe we did better than I expected because this is just not a very good draft class. Quite a few 76s and 75s, to be fair. Even JoJo Miller in that top group. Yeah, so we did quite well. Not a good draft class. We made the most of it. So, of course, we got to jump in to target passing here with JoJo Miller. That number two looks pretty good. And hopefully we just get that easy skill point for him. And a dev trade upgrade would be nice. Maybe a superstar X Factor, but I doubt it. Doesn't really happen too often. So we'll get that upgrade for him. That's going to be nice. Uh, at least with a skill point, I should say, like up to a 75. And once he gets a 75 overall, if he is superstar to ever hire, a like plus ability slot will appear in the upgrade. So we we're going to know for a fact whether we have a superstar dev quarterback or not. But he's slinging it right now with the big bullseye. This is one of the easiest drills you're going to find, which I like, just because it's so quick. I can get through it in a flash for that skill point upgrade. But, yeah, it, you know, sometimes you might have to redo it every now and again. It's nice when you don't have to. And we do get a skill point upgrade, but no dev trade upgrade. No shock there. I am coming to the very troubling realization that we really can't develop any of our interior defensive linemen beyond what they are right now. They're all about not developable. Developable. Nwosu and Jones, both 27 years old, below an 80 overall. Even with star dev, their downfall, their decline is within the next two seasons. Jordan Brooks can maybe get up to like an 84, maybe 85 if he plays well. Boye Mafe is probably never going to be higher than an 85. Jaron Reed has nowhere to go. It's over, unfortunately, for a lot of these guys. And I don't know what we're going to do about that. Derek Hall, there's no chance. Normal dev... 70 something overall there's simply no chance which sucks there's got to be a way to develop some of these players that look undevelopable and unless you do the training with them every single week i don't think it's happening and we just don't have that type of time i would be here for oh i don't know probably four days to record a rebuild if i wanted to focus on a guy like Derek hall to make him really good I don't think the, uh, I don't think it'd be worth it. I think that would be reaching the point of diminishing returns. Where is Bradford coming from? Unreal. Oh my God. This is the glitch. Oh my God. So I, I just freaked out because I wasn't expecting him to get the ball. So Jason Myers, our kicker is in at quarterback because we didn't have a quarterback on the roster. So half of his handoff attempts are fumbled. So we get a credit for stopping the run and a fumble for most of these attempts, which this is literally the glitch. This is not supposed to be happening probably, but they don't expect your kicker to be handing the ball off. But for training camp, this is incredible. This is simply the easiest gold I will ever have in my entire life. It's a fumble every time. And the higher the multiplier goes, the more points we get. If I don't make a mistake, this is like a guaranteed 
200,000 attempt. Maybe higher. Way higher, probably. I definitely undersold the multiplier. This could be over 500,000 if we keep getting these fumbles. This could be absolutely incredible. I lost my multiplier, unfortunately, because of a half-yard run. They gave it to him. I guess I didn't cut stick. I just used the conservative tackle. So the multiplier was dead at, like, times 26 or something. But we're still in play for 500,000 if he starts fumbling the ball a little bit more. But I don't, I don't think we're going to end up getting there. We're just going to need to fumble on, like, every attempt. Which is possible, I guess. But, yeah, it's probably going to end up being, like, 430. Something like that. Not even. But that's still a pretty crazy attempt. About 400,000. And it could have been way more. And no dev up uh, upgrade for having about 400,000 points. Ooh, we actually have a star or better development tight end. Probably star. He's got good speed. Great traits. Who in the hell is Al Lambert from Florida? The next Kyle Pitts. He was drafted by the CPU. Well, hats off to them. They got us a star or better development tight end, which is star probably, but still, I'll take that. And an ability slot for JoJo Miller. He's got at least superstar dev. That makes that pick even better. Obviously, that's great. JSN up to superstar dev as well. And we have to start thinking about moving Tyler Lockett. It's just, I don't like seeing all that red. So this is the way the team's going to look. I probably trade Tyler Lockett at the deadline if we're not performing that well. Could use an upgrade on the O-line. Switch to a 4-3 on defense. Just think it fits our personnel a bit better. And we do look pretty good. Not great. The D-line needs a complete overhaul. And safety could end up being a problem. But the D-line is really going to be my focus going forward. Just... We need better players that are not 27 or 30 years old at some of these. Jaron Reed, Draymond Jones, you know, Uchenna Nwosu. I like him, but I can't do anything with him here in Madden. Three and four at the midseason mark, but that's second in the NFC West. The Niners are four and three. And this is the week to either make a trade or hang on to what we have and, and see what happens. Quandre Diggs will be a free agent, as will Julian Love. We don't really need to keep around, but if he's cheap, it probably makes sense to keep him. It doesn't really make sense for that price, though. Reed as well. Obviously, we'll pick up the fifth-year option on Charles Cross. Or we could just wait and re-sign him, but he doesn't really want to be here, so I just want to keep him around for as long as possible. Jaron Reed needs to be traded. I I like Quandre Diggs, and he's, he's still going to be good enough. Safeties are going to regress a little bit slower. So maybe a one-year deal. But I think I think this is the time on Tyler Lockett as well. So Reed and Lockett just kind of makes sense to move on at this point. We're going to make a big-time trade here. Tyler Lockett, Jaron Reed, and a third are headed to the Texans. We're getting a first-round pick and Ezra Cleveland back. So we get a little bit of an upgrade on the offensive line for a few years. First-round pick, obviously, is going to be pretty nice. And then we have a need at wide receiver, but JSN is going to fill that pretty quickly. But then we could take another. JoJo Miller is revealed to be superstar development. Lambert has star. Not really a surprise there. And then defensively, Freeman is only superstar. A little bit disappointing for sure. Woodard has star though. And Thomas Johnson has superstar. So... I know we had some top picks for sure, but I think we hit it out of the park. Superstar dev, linebacker, corner, and quarterback. Really, really good draft for us. This is a huge season for development. I know we're obviously not getting the results we want, but I, I'm liking what I'm seeing, at least for the future. It is a two-year extension for Quandre Diggs. Hook him to keep him in town. I, I didn't trade Julian Love. I'd like him back. We have the cap room. I'd like him back for another season, and then we could potentially trade him next year. But uh, he doesn't want to come back. Why are you being difficult? Boye Mafe does have a dev trade upgrade challenge. All he needs is a sack or a TFL, anything. And he's going to end up getting an upgrade here. So I really do think he's going to end up doing at least something and getting up to... Ooh. Getting up to star dev. 
there could be some good players in this class. There really could be, especially at positions that we need, like wide receiver kind of, but defensive end for sure, outside linebacker. We're looking good. 39-29, and Boye Mafe did not get the upgrade challenge. How do you not get anything? Do something. So we finished seven and 10, not exactly where we wanna be, but at least it's improvement. And then offensively, our rookie quarterback was better than Gino was last year. Is he gonna win rookie of the year? Maybe. I don't think you get an upgrade to superstar X Factor for that though. I think it would only be to up to superstar if you had star. Kenneth Walker was amazing. Adam, not Adam Lambert. This isn't uh, the guy from American Idol who actually I think is the lead singer for Queen now. But Al Lambert leads the team in yards, nine touchdowns. JSN was really good. DK Metcalf played on the team as well. Offensively, Jordan Brooks, a ton of tackles, 19 for loss for Nwosu, also had eight sacks, seven for Mafe. Really not very bad, except, you know, Mafe didn't get the one sack when we needed him to. We do have an upgrade for JoJo Miller, who I'm sure is going to stay at Superstar Dev. Did he win Offensive Rookie of the Year? He sure did, which is a really nice XP boost. We're going to upgrade Field General here. His short accuracy needs to go up. It's pretty low, and... Get a big plus two, throw under pressure by two, mid by one, and also another ability slot. So it we'll, uh, doesn't really matter too much at this overall, but we're on a couple different things. And I think he will end up being a superstar X-Factor type player for us. Just one more big season and he's getting a big upgrade. And the Eagles beat the Chiefs in the Ryan Matthews Bowl. Linval Joseph is another one, Chargers and Eagles. And there, there are more. Ooh, Seiya Jura Tutu is actually a super deep pull that definitely played on the Chargers. I think he was an Eagle as well. I'm pretty sure he was. Jojo Miller, Offensive Rookie of the Year. Dak wins MVP, which could end up happening in 2023, as crazy as that may sound. Dak has been very good this year. Now, they haven't really played anyone yet, a lot of teams, I think every team under 500, but they've looked incredible in those games. I, you know, the ones that they've won, they've had a few losses as well. And I hate the Cowboys. I'm a Giants fan, but I think you can't discredit what they've done so far just by saying they played worse teams, which I've seen. They've been so good. Their defense is amazing and their offense is having these massive performances. Now, maybe that's being blown a bit out of proportion, but I mean... Dak's been amazing. C.D. Lamb's been amazing. Their left guard, Tyler Smith, might be one of the best in the league right now, which is wild. He was okay at tackle, but he is an amazing, amazing guard. And maybe I just wait on Charles Cross and just try to sign him to a long-term extension. Might save money overall. And then I'm going to up the contract on Julian Love. And he wants to just play for a new team. So... I guess we missed the boat. I don't think I want to franchise tag him for 18 mil. I guess it, it is twice as expensive. You know, whatever. <laughs> we'll, we'll potentially tag and trade. That seems insane. It's all right. Jalen Waddle is here in free agency. JOK. Greg Newsom. Okay. A lot of good free agents. Not really sure how to handle this. Because... I was thinking about drafting a receiver, but Jalen Waddle's here. Better than anyone we could draft, probably. Or at least for sure right now. And then Greg Newsom's in there, but we don't really need corner. And if we were to move somebody back to safety, I'm not sure that would make a ton of sense uh, with our current guys. Steve Lowry, if he was a better athlete, and he is good, just not that fast, he's going to end up being awesome. His route running's fantastic. His catching is fantastic. He's going to be awesome. I think Jalen Waddle would make more sense. All right, so I offered on Jalen Waddle, not anything extreme, and we didn't sign him. I just, I figure with two good wide receivers, and we saw the production of DK Metcalf last year, if we're going to be a more tight end centric offense in the KC playbook, tight end going to be a little bit more important than bringing in a guy like Jalen Waddle when we have two good receivers already, and I don't really want to pay more than like 20 million to bring him in. So I just thought it made sense to kind of lowball him. If we got him, would have been really nice, obviously. But 
it also makes sense to not kind of kill our cap space and make the rest of the team better with, you know, real needs outside of just wide receiver. Patriots at number one. They go with Cedric Church, a right tackle from Washington State. Steelers at number two go Braden Durant from Toledo. Another Toledo player for the Steelers. Interesting. Deontay Johnson, of course, being the other one I can think of. And they actually have a cornerback this year, Quinion or Quinion Mitchell, who uh, could end up being really good. He has the size, has the speed. See if he ends up, you know, kind of sneaking into that top 50 range. Trading a 1, a 3, a 4, and a 5, the 4 being in 2027, for a 2025 first round pick from the Giants. So trading up to number 3, and I am not trading up for the receiver. The receiver looks really good. Again, maybe a bit on the slow side. Probably going to be a top player in the whole class. Maybe the highest overall. I, again, I'm just not putting that much of an emphasis on wide receiver. But he does look really, really good. Just like a bit slow, but it's really more average speed. Might be like 90, which really isn't too bad. But I'm going to draft Antoine Dockery from Michigan. 6'3", 252, with elite speed and acceleration. Great strength. A finesse moves, A pursuit. A awareness, B block should be tackle. He's going to end up playing defensive end for us. That's our like long-term Uchenna Nwosu replacement. He's got hidden dev with 86 speed, 90 acceleration, 81 strength. Should be a very, very good player. And to me, just more of a need than wide receiver. I, I keep saying that, but we just didn't really need wide receiver as much. And somebody draft him so I don't have to move up. Somebody draft him. Ugh, God, he's available at seven. Okay, I'm trading number 27, a two this year, next year, and a third as well. It's a lot to give up, but this receiver is just still sticking out here on the board and appears to be the best player in the whole draft. I wasn't going to take him if it cost like so much to move up, but we keep all of our first round picks except for the one that we're using to trade up. And I just think he's going to be probably about the best player in the draft. 89 speed. Great acceleration, agility, change of direction. He just should be really, really good. We could change the offense to feature more wide receivers now. You go something like, I don't know, Dallas playbook. But just at that point at number seven, I thought it made sense to move up. Could come back for a linebacker later. Jaleel Bramble from Georgia we know is around one to two talent that should get into day three. But I think... I think I'm going to end up trading one of these second rounders, maybe both. This defensive tackle looks sick. Who ran faster than him? Lynn Clancy, who definitely looks good. Also, uh, I just saw Ian Watkins is 6'3", 409 pounds. Elite strength, elite acceleration. Looks just like the superstar dev defensive tackle we drafted in Falcons franchise. Spoiler alert if you didn't see that. He was like a 74 overall with like 83 power moves and like lower block shed, but superstar depth. Malik Alexander is the first defensive tackle and he looks really good, but has hidden or not hidden dev. Great speed and strength acceleration, but just normal. And then we got to take Ian Watkins. I have never seen a player over 400 pounds in, in the game before. He is only normal dev, 99 strength, 85 acceleration, but normal development. At 409 pounds, you couldn't tell. It looks great. Looks great for 409. Real slim 409. How does he only have normal? They're killing me in this draft. And here's a 6'5 corner. Sharif Moore. All right, well, I mean, I'm down for the crazy archetypes of this draft, apparently. He's also got normal dev. It's a 6'5 corner. Doesn't exist. So that ended up being a crazy weird draft. See what these overalls end up being though and they're all right i mean antoine dockery is a 76 which is pretty good for an edge rusher typically those don't get super high and you can see he's very very good 80 finesse moves 76 block shed zone coverage is terrible he might even jump up to a 77 overall at defensive end i could see that happening so it could end up looking slightly better although we know that you know he's good either way the attributes are phenomenal he's a great athlete does stay at 76 overall. Steve Lowry is a 79. Quite good. Speed's not great, holding him back a little bit. Catching's good. Route running is really solid. He's got every trait you could want. Great change of direction. Really solid player. Malik Alexander's a 73. 
Ian Watkins is only a 72. Sharif Moore is a 71. You got some players down the board. But um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like we made the best of what we had available to us. Got the second highest overall player in the class. The uh, tackle that went at number one, Cedric Church, is an 80, which is amazing. Here's a good corner down the board, 77 overall. I don't know. Not an amazing draft class. I feel like we did pretty well, to be honest. Not amazing, but pretty well. Connor Zimmer is a player I forgot I was even interested in. Only normal dev, so I feel good about forgetting. I also just realized that Al Lambert, Al Lambert was upgraded to superstar development, I guess, because he was probably near the top of the league in tight end yards or touchdowns. So he's got superstar dev now. I still think my, my plan's not going to change. I know it seems, you know, weird that we traded up for a receiver and didn't get Jalen Waddle. You know, I thought about both possibilities. I was just ready to not draft a receiver and keep doing what we were doing. But when it was clear that he was going to be available and one of the best players in the draft, I just felt like it made sense to move up at that point. Maybe it didn't, but we saved money by doing so as opposed to Jalen Waddle. And Waddle's better. For sure, but this way we can get JSN involved. I don't know. It's really like a 50-50 to me. I don't know if there's a right or wrong decision. There's probably a right decision. Maybe Waddle, sacrifice the money, and then build up the team in other ways through the draft. Also, going up against Tariq Wolin in these drills is incredibly annoying. He's 6'3 or 6'4 with 98 speed. I don't know how we caught that. He is incredibly annoying to go up against. Recovery speed is amazing. He's so tall. This is so annoying. I hate facing Tariq Wolin. But Al Lambert's catching everything. So the method that I'm doing here in chase and tackle, and I'm not sure if it's the big thing that's working, but I'm not hitting right trigger until the quarterback's about to either throw or hand off the ball. And then I hit right trigger pretty much immediately. And it's been a fumble every single time except for two of the last, like, 30. So, that could be a way to get really high scores on this as well. With the, of course, quarterback, who is a kicker. Now, I'm, I'm hitting right trigger now, but when I hit it right at the handoff point, the QB, who's the kicker, just drops it. I don't know why he's doing it, but it's happening. All right, I screwed up, but over 900,000. This is definitely cheating, but uh, you know, sometimes they just don't fumble the ball. I'll try it here. See, didn't do it there, but over 900K, pretty good. We're gonna trade Uchenna Nwosu, Quandre Diggs, and a fourth to get Derek Stingley. I think we're just gonna try to convert somebody to free safety. Diggs is just getting worse and worse and worse, and I just need Dockery to start. I think he's gonna be better long-term than Uchenna Nwosu. Just another guy that we're just gonna watch regress and have no ceiling, essentially. So Antoine Dockery, well, let me rephrase that. Um, no upside, I should say. Antoine Dockery should be pretty good. Got his block shed up. He's only got the swim move trait. I still think he's going to be pretty good. Nearly got his development trait revealed. Even if it's star, that's fine. And then defensively, somebody's got to play free safety. I mean, Devin Witherspoon has a skill set that says he would be awesome there. But his own coverage in the game is quite poor because the CPU has only been upgrading man coverage. So do I want to move him to free safety? I'm not sure that I do. Might just put your Marcus Freeman back there. He's got decent enough tackling, hit power. We are 2-5 and five at the midseason mark. Offense is bad. Defense is worse. Things are not going well in Seattle. Kenneth Walker, this is a great deal. I just don't want to right now. How does that even make any sense? Just say yes if it's a great deal. What are we doing? DK Metcalf is back. We have a lot of money, but a lot of big time people to pay as well. Tariq Wolin has the skill set to move back to safety, by the way, with the higher zone coverage, but I'm not going to move him uh, out of our CB1 spot. Charles Cross, big time extension and he is back. Maybe save a little bit of money long-term there. The reason that Derek Stingley wasn't incredibly difficult to trade for was because the, his uh, contract was expiring. And uh, just say yes. I don't need the story of, well, I was thinking about, just say yes or say no. 
give me, you know, some type of idea about what the future holds, not just, eh, I could think about it. Tell me yes or no, please. Abraham, Lucas, we're just extending everybody. We have the money. I want to keep our team together. I don't know why we keep losing, but I want to keep the team together. I'd like to start winning a little bit more. That could be nice, but I have all these wishy-washy players that are just like, I don't know, maybe. Draymond Jones resigns, might end up trading him. There are just so many guys on this team that you really can't develop that much, and it's super frustrating. Boye Mafe is back. He's another, another one of those guys that I'm like, I'd love to be able to develop you, but can't really do a whole lot. Kobe Bryant, I haven't even talked about. Fun player, Thorpe Award winner at Cincinnati. And um, that's the best DB in college football, by the way, if you did not know. We have money to re-sign everybody we need to, but we just keep losing. So might be a good idea to look in a different direction. I don't know. That is absolutely incredible. We end up sneaking into the playoffs. I thought there was absolutely no chance. And here we are. I mean, we started out one and three. Two and three, two and four, two and five. It was just not good. And then the second half of the season, or I'll just say post buy, significantly better. We finished the year four and one, sneaking into the playoffs at nine and eight. You know, they've been a little bit underwhelming so far, but maybe this is where we start to turn the corner. JoJo Miller with a very unbelievably round number season 4,000 yards 500 attempts 30 touchdowns 10 interceptions 8 yards per attempt rushing Kenneth Walker continues to be great did put the ball on the ground two times and then receiving DK Metcalf was incredible didn't get a ton of production from our other receivers JSN certainly more than Steve Lowry who just has star development is good but was he worth what we traded to get him now I'm not so sure. I was hoping for a better development trade. Boye Mafe leads the team in sacks with 10, 8 for Draymond Jones, 6 for the rookie Antoine Dockery, who has just star development. Still good and is already as good as Uchenna Nwosu and he's 6 years younger and under contract for much longer. I don't know. This is just a really weird team. You know, it, it's one of those instances where I look at the squad and go, I don't know what we really do to become a contender you know we get knocked out in the first round of the playoffs and I'm just not sure what to do other than change the playbooks I mean obviously you can get a couple of other pieces here and there to try to you know boost you up a little bit but the framework and structure of the team is pretty much in place and we're just not really winning Lamar Jackson wins MVP as the Ravens win the Super Bowl Patrick Queen Super Bowl MVP and no Seahawks anywhere in the yearly awards. So we have a boatload of cap space here, potentially some fifth year options to pick up. And I mean, I guess we probably do. Got a lot of cap room. I wonder if somebody retired. Kenneth Walker likes this offer, but said no the first time. I'll give him a little bit more money and he's gonna test free agency. Why? I'm gonna have to franchise tag him. I Seems insane, but I just could not let him go. And then Derek Stingley, I'd be willing to overpay him to keep him. He is expensive, but good, and also wants to play for a new team. And he's not a player I can franchise tag. Why is everybody saying no? I'm going to have to overpay Ezra Cleveland now because I'm afraid. Julian Love, I keep end up signing to short-term deals. I might just let him walk now. Maybe a one-year deal again with increased money. Not interested in signing. That's yeah, fine. Tyler Linderbaum is here in free agency. And honestly, there are a lot of good offensive linemen. This should be priority number one. Need Tyler Linderbaum. Whatever it takes. Huge upgrade at a really important position on the offensive line. A lot of teams are interested, but not as interested as I am. I will pay you whatever it takes. I'm going after, let's see here, Tyler Linderbaum, Joel Batonio, Derek Stingley, and Harrison Butkert upgrade at kicker. Need some of these guys to join the, and jump in. Okay, Linderbaum, Batonio, Butkert. 
We don't end up getting Derek Stingley. It's okay. I mean, we traded for him and then lost him, which sucks. But we did have a, a pretty good free agency overall, so I can't be too mad about it. We lose our CB3 that I was going to overpay anyway. It's, it's not ideal that we traded stuff to get him. But, I mean, it, it could be worse. And, by the way... Jamarcus Freeman is now a superstar X-Factor. Just cuz. For no reason. I love it. I don't need a reason. If it, they wanted for no reason upgrade my entire team to superstar X-Factor, I'd be okay with it. Now, the likelihood of that happening is zero, but I would like it. Linebackers look good. Secondary looks good. I need a big D-line upgrade. Mafe is up to star dev. I need something at defensive tackle. I need like a game wrecker. And I would trade a lot to get one. Jonathan Allen, Jeffrey Simmons, Dexter Lawrence, somebody like that. Now, money at that point is going to be a big issue for us. We have money right now. Draymond Jones is kind of like the tough one. Uh, Jason Myers is going to get cut now that I have signed Harrison Butker. So that gives us a, a little bit more wiggle room. Like, we have money, just I know once we take on a big contract... We're going to have no money. This is a huge trade, and I don't just mean because Ian Watkins weighs over 400 pounds. I'm also trading Anthony Bradford, a first this year, and then a few future picks for Jonathan Allen and Genevieve Clowney. Clowney is not going to be a guy I build around, obviously. Former Seahawk, by the way. Uh, he is just someone that I acquired to make the cap work. That's it. Jonathan Allen is the big time piece of this trade. Draymond Jones has to be traded, and we'll see if we can get anything back for him. He's just not there. You can't develop someone who's 29 in the game. You just can't. We're trading Draymond Jones to the Bears for a second round pick next year. Kind of just the best thing I could get back from anybody. So it's a nice quick salary cap dump. And we are also going to be releasing Genevieve Clowney. Just don't really see the need to have him on the team. And instead of Draymond Jones, we're targeting John Franklin Myers. I want one season of John Franklin Myers at defensive tackle. We're going to move him over and it should be a nice pickup for us. It's going to be an interesting draft. Clearly, based on the overall of the team, we've built a really, really solid roster. Just need to find more on-field success. Okay, here we are in the draft. There's not really a lot for us to do here. I feel like we've put the team in a pretty good spot. It's just about maybe like something for depth here and a tight end with a catch in traffic and a run block as a backup tight end for acceleration but runs pretty well a medium route running this is actually a pretty good looking player 89 agility at 66 251 for a backup blocking tight end who's not even a blocking archetype possession style i feel pretty good about that and he's 75 overall that's got to be one of the better overall players in the entire draft now, the number one player was a fullback drafted in the seventh round, and then a running back. What year is this? This is wild. Now, Jawan Harvin was somebody I had on my board that I thought looked pretty good. Just not in a position to draft him. Don't need another receiver, but looks very, very good. 77 overall. But uh, yeah, we did about as well as we could have done. Okay, 2026. This needs to be a successful year for us, and it's a good team. I don't know really why we'd find... Uh, such a hard time winning games, but the offensive line's good. The receivers are good. The Like, all the playmakers are good. And I'm actually tempted to start this rookie tight end, Demetrius Bowles, over our other tight end. Now, his deep route running's terrible, but I don't know. There's just something about him. But it's stupid because Lambert has superstar dev. I just can't do that. But got upgrades all over the place. John Franklin Myers is an 84 overall defensive tackle couple of decent edge rushers. Jonathan Allen should be a big boost. We just need to win. That's that's what the entire point of a rebuild is. But we've built it. It's time to see the rewards. All right, now that's more like it. Five and two. We don't need to be the best team in the league as we're the number one offense. Number 14 defense. What can we do to get our defense better? We're allowing a ton of rushing touchdowns. And that's all offense. Don't worry about that. We are allowing... A ton of touchdowns. The most amount of touchdowns in the entire league. Okay, well, that's a big time problem because we're not going to be able to outscore our opponent in every game. How do we fix this? Well, Kobe Bryant right now is starting in the slot. 
he is maybe the lowest overall player on the whole team. That could be fair to say. And uh, of, of like the starters or guys that actually play quite a bit. You can see it in specialists here. I think bringing in a big time slot corner could be effective. And also, why is Derek Hall playing over Dockery and Mafe? Why would I even think that I need to go and check that in depth chart? Come on. You know what it is? Is that rush right end here needs to be a power rusher. That's that's the entire overall point. I don't really want to trade Antoine Dockery. I like him, but I also want to trade Boye Mafe either. I can't trade for anybody. I just I think it's cheesy to trade away future picks once the video's over. So I'm not going to be doing that. This is just what we are, and we'll see how we do. So we did make the playoffs. Here we are in the wild card. We won our division at 12 and 5, but we're not the best team in the NFC. But definitely a really, really good season, finally, right? And a lot of that is because of JoJo Miller, our starting quarterback here in his third year. Over 4,600 passing yards, 42 touchdowns to just nine interceptions. It's now a 90 overall strong arm archetype with 98 throw power. Short accuracy still needs a boost. And we had a great running game featuring Kenneth Walker, of course, 18 touchdowns. DK Metcalf went off. JSN was an awesome number two. And Al Lambert, the tight end, had a pretty good year. Steve Lowry just continues to be here. Um, Lowry, I don't, I don't, there's no way that I feel comfortable saying that last name. I just think Kyle Lowry, even though that's an O instead of the A here. And Lowry just doesn't sound right. It feels like I'm saying Lowry with a weird accent. Maybe it's a Lowry. I don't know. I don't like it. It's a fake player. I'll say it however I want. John Franklin Myers. What a season. 15 TFLs. Also 11 and a half sacks. Although 14 from John Allen led the way. 11 and a half for Antoine Dockery. Just five and a half for Boye Mafe. A few interceptions in there as well. But at least we made the playoffs. And this is where we make a playoff run. I mean, the Vikings are an 86 overall. I'm still jumping in to make sure we get this one done. We're significantly better, but as we know, that doesn't always mean anything. Here we go. Good start for us, and we allow points almost instantly, and now we're down 14-7. Are the Vikings going to be the ones that knock us out of the playoffs here? I won't allow it. 24-14. Come on. Play some defense. Not going to happen. It's 24-21. And Jojo Miller is kneeling the ball down. I love it. Now, how we end up scoring post-knee makes no sense to me. But we get the win. We go through to the divisional at least. And we finally won a playoff game. Imagine that. This is another team I do not like seeing ever in the playoffs. It's the Atlanta Falcons. And they're 8-9. and nine, But their playbooks are just usually incredible and the fact that they've actually built a good team here they're up to an 86 overall means that they're probably just going to give us a really tough time i hope that's not true here we are at lumen or as i want to call it century link field and i'll probably never stop thinking that every time i see it we got home field advantage need the 12s to show up and hopefully put the falcons away in the battle of the birds and it's, we're down already. But we tied it up and taken the lead 14-7. 17-7. Need to keep our foot on the gas pedal. Defense is playing pretty well. And we keep stopping the Falcons from scoring. But when our offense doesn't show up, our defense can only get so many stops in a row. We're holding a one possession lead. Brought it to two. Falcons bring it right back to one. But it doesn't matter. The game is over. We hold on for just long enough. 31-24 is your final. Desmond Ritter dominated our defense throwing for nearly 400 yards, two touchdowns, and completing nearly 90% of his passes, but not enough to win. And it's an NFC West battle in the conference championship. The Niners made it in at 10-7, have a very good team, and are certainly very capable of knocking us out of the playoffs here. Hope that that doesn't happen, obviously, but this is going to be a tough one. And this is a really close game so far. Niners holding the lead, but we grab the tie and take the lead right there. This is a really back and forth game. 24-13. Niners get another score on the board. We got to put this away here. <laughs> Three minutes to go. We've made it to the 12-yard line. Need to take time off the clock. I'm not going to snap the ball until about one second. Now, if we play this right, we can use a couple of downs here. 
get the first down without scoring, that's going to be big and then waste even more time. Now, I know a touchdown makes it a two-possession game, which obviously that's what I want. That'd be really nice. But I don't want to give the Niners enough time to score and then potentially get the football back via onside kick or any number of different ways that I've seen games go wrong before. So I'm going to play this extremely carefully and hopefully just grind away at the Niners and waste either all of their timeouts or all of the time off the clock. Fourth and one, we are not taking the field goal to go up by six and just say, hey, go win with a touchdown. It's fourth and one, and I'm going to try QB sneak. Now, they, they are really geared up to stop it right now. I wonder if we could get to something different. Can we even pass out of this? That feels risky. We're going to run at it. Kenneth Walker, little jump cut, and he is stopped. Now, the reason this isn't the worst thing is because the Niners now have one timeout and need to go 98 yards. That's what we have on our side right now. So we're going to try to lean into that, and uh, hopefully this quarterback makes a mistake, and Brock Purdy is just going to scramble for a ton of yardage. What the hell? I know it seems like I should have taken the points. I'm, I'm never taking the points in that spot. I'd rather force the Niners to go make a play. And uh, definitely really frustrating that we don't get into the end zone. But that is a user pick. Easy reads. Hop on pop. Good old fashioned Dr. Seuss book. And that is an easy read to end it. Brock Purdy throws a pick. That's the game. Simply no way we can lose this one at this point. 24-21 is your final. We are headed to the Super Bowl with the least impressive, most anticlimactic ending of all time with the most boring user pick I've ever seen. But we're moving on to the Super Bowl. And this is the final team here in the Super Bowl. Really good looking squad. And obviously when they play up, it looks even better. JSN's playing up to a 93 the tight ends are looking really, really nice overall. Bowles has star dev. You know, JoJo Miller's playing up to a 94. And then defensively, this has kind of been the weak point of the team, I would say, overall. But they're a good-looking group. The corners are awesome with Devin Witherspoon and Tariq Woolen. Safeties look really good. It's still rocking with Jamal Adams. The front seven is usually like a focal point for me in these rebuilds, and it just didn't really end up being that way in this one for some reason and I, I really do think that you win in the front seven especially with that defensive line and then the stuff on the back end is like a bonus but you don't see too many instances outside of the legion of boom as we have upgrades to superstar x factor from jojo miller and kenneth walker but outside of the seahawks team with the legion of boom you don't really see too many teams that are built more so on the back end as opposed to the front end and they had some decent players you know on those seattle teams like Chris Clemens was decent. Cliff Averill was decent. Red Bryant was decent. Brandon Meebain was decent. And then, of course, Bobby Wagner was like their big middle linebacker. KJ Wright was really good too, but like they were fine players. They weren't dominant forces for the most part up front to where you could point to the secondary and be like, okay, Earl Thomas is the best free safety in the NFL. Richard Sherman is the best corner in the NFL. Those things were certainly true for a time. Cam Chancellor was maybe the best box safety in the NFL. And then whoever was on the other side, whether it was Brandon Browner or Byron Maxwell, those guys got the job done. They were good in the system. And the front seven was not why they were so successful. You know, maybe if you went back and, and really watched, maybe they were sneaky, underrated, they were really good. I was too young to be able to watch film or appreciate what I was seeing, even if I was able to. Um, but maybe they were even better. But this is a very interesting Super Bowl so far. We are up 28 to 20. Jaguars are giving us a really good fight, and they're another team that simulates really, really well. So uh, we really need to just close this one out, and I'm realizing we're jumping in on third and 12. This is a huge down in distance, and they could really bait me if Trayvon Walker drops back in coverage, but he doesn't. We're able to hit DK Metcalf easily for what could be a massive first down because that allows us now to chew a whole lot of clock and potentially put this game away. Obviously, we'll need you know, to take a little bit more time off the clock, another first down or two, which it seems like we're going to be able to do. A field goal basically ends the game. We have an eight-point advantage right now, but that's not going to be enough to win. 
Touchdown, two-point conversion. We're tied. We're going to overtime. We need a field goal to make a two-possession. And a uh, well, pin-pull really works well. I've never seen that run concept in Madden ever. But it's in the Dallas playbook, I think I'm in. Dallas playbook offensively? I think we are. That could be fun to run in Falcons franchise, but this season I'm doing, of course, the, the uh, New England Patriots. And I want to stop passing in this particular video. I want to take more time off the clock, and that revolves around Kenneth Walker, my 99 overall running back, and uh, just winning the game. Don't need a pass to win the game. Third and four. We were always going to run the ball in that spot. Take away another timeout from Jacksonville. I just kick a field goal. That's it. That's all we have to do. 31-20. That should be the game. Harrison Butker drills it for us. But Jacksonville. I'm worried they got something up their sleeve. We need to just stop them for two minutes. No big scores. No quick scores. That's all we need. Make them keep it in front of us. Why are you throwing picks to me? Easy reads. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. And the Jags are going to have to go fishing for another Super Bowl because they're not bringing the Lombardi Trophy home with them. I, I couldn't have phrased that worse. But they're going to have to go fishing. Something. I don't know. Taking a shot down the field. Lowry. Missed him. Doesn't matter. Game over. All right. I'll do one more. I'll do one more. One more deep shot. I saw Lambert was wide open on that last play. I don't want that. I want a bomb to JSN. This is not even catchable. He actually caught it. And then got knocked out of bounds and then dropped it. But doesn't matter. Super Bowl win. Seahawks are back. No Russell Wilson. No Legion of Boom. No Marshawn Lynch. No problem. The Seattle Seahawks are Super Bowl champs yet again. Good stuff. Good stuff. JoJo. What's his name? JoJo Miller. Yes. Never would have come up with that. JoJo Miller ends up being a Super Bowl champ. We got it done. Nice little comeback in there as well. Looks like we were down at some point there. Zero through the second quarter. Came back to win. Is that right? I guess it must be. See you in the next one. Take it easy.